Hello and welcome to question one of the 2022 paper one in the Leave Insert Ordinary Level Maths. So as always, just if you want a copy of the set of notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and don't forget to like in order to get access to more playlists. So question one is complex numbers and let's have a read through it. And don't forget to pause the video, have a go yourself and see if your answer matches with the answer I get. So if you notice here, this is a 15D question and it's all of part A and all of part B together. So the complex number Z1 is shown on the Argon diagram below. So we have the imaginary axis here and we have the real axis here, the horizontal axis. So it's saying in part A, part one, use the Argon diagram, write down the values of S, or sorry, Z1 and Z bar. Okay, now Z bar is the complex conjugate of Z1. So let's get stuck in. So we know that it's the real value first, okay? And the real value there for Z1 is minus two. So it's minus two. And then on the imaginary axis, it's negative three. And that's the imaginary axis. So we give it the I. So that's great. So pause again if you want and just see, can you find the conjugate of Z1? Now the conjugate of complex number is basically directly above it the same distance away on the imaginary axis. So this should be our point here. I'm gonna mark it, make it real obvious. And they always want you, so as I say here, plot and label, <clears throat> so this is actually part two now, plot and label the conjugate of Z1 on the Argon diagram above. So at, at the present, I've plotted it, but I need to also label it. So I'm gonna call that Z1 bar. That's that. Okay, so moving on, I think I've tried everything here. Now I should write down the complex number. Um, that was negative two plus three i. So you'll notice there the only difference in conjugates is that the sign in front of the imaginary part is different. So if this is minus two minus three i, its conjugate is minus two plus three i. Now on the um, next slide, we have part B. So remember part A and B are marked together. Okay, and part C then is given 10 marks. So it says Z2 and Z3 are two other complex numbers. It's telling us that Z2 is minus five plus three i, and Z3 is four minus two i. Now they always give the statement, it doesn't usually mean much uh, in the scheme of things. But in complex numbers, i is equal to the square root of negative one. That's the core concept of complex numbers. Now, following from that, if I was to square uh, both sides, Okay, the, I'd be left with i squared. Now the square here cancels the square root. And I'm left with negative one. And that's where that statement. In fact, this is probably the most useful thing we'll use in problems. Now part B then says plot and label Z2 and Z3 on the Argon diagram on the previous page. So I just copied it across here to have it handy. So we have Z1 and we have uh, so Z1 and Z1 conjugate already marked. Now we're looking here to plot Z2, so it's negative five on the real axis and plus three i on the uh, imaginary axis. So that's Z2, I should always, I should label it as well. And then Z3 is four on the real axis, negative two i on the imaginary axis, and that's Z3. So that seems to be it. And again, that's 15 marks, which is a whacking amount of marks when you think about it. Um, for something that is fairly handy um, in the scheme of things. So really, one of the skills we have to be able to show in complex numbers is our ability to plot on the Argon diagram. And just while I have them here, if I was looking for the conjugate of Z2, the, it's directly below it, so it would be, what, be um, minus five minus three i. The conjugate of Z3 would be up here, and that would be uh, four plus two i. So they're always directly above for the same distance away from the real axis. And we're not actually asked for that in this question, but just no harm. Now part C then says, uh, write, okay, um, Z2 take away Z3. So even before I do anything here, I'm going to just do what it says, okay? Now so it's minus five plus three I, and from that I'm taking away Z3, which is four minus two i. Now I put in brackets because I'm taking away both the real part and the imaginary part. And what's gonna happen here is, let me just rewrite, go left to right, 
nothing's affecting the minus 5 plus 3i. When I put that in brackets, the minus by plus is going to change that to a minus 4. And then the minus by a minus is going to change that to a plus 2i. And one of the most common mistakes I see is that people forget to take away the second thing. And they end up taking away 4 and then taking away the, the negative 2i. And they don't forget that that's going to change sign. Now, once we're here, we could group them, OK? There's no algebra involved here. I'm just putting like terms beside each other to make the calculation easier. Not sure if that's technically a necessary step, but no harm. Um, then minus 5 minus 4 is minus 9. And then 3i plus 2i is plus 5i. And that's it. OK. Um, now, the next part of that question says, find the modulus of. Now, the modulus of z2 minus z3, we know what that is. So if I was to write it over here, so the modulus of z2 take away z3, okay, line, those lines mean distance. That's the same thing as minus 9 plus 5i. Because we found what z2 minus z3 is, and it's minus 9 or minus 5i. Five, minus let's say for some reason you couldn't find that. Just for whatever reason, you can't remember how to do it, uh, or you got it wrong, okay? Whatever you use in the next little bit would be accepted as correct. Like the error would be here. Um, now, the modulus of a complex number is effectively the distance it is away from the origin. So the modulus of this number here, okay, is the distance from the point to the origin. Now, if you see what I'm doing now, okay, I'm going to try to do this. I'm terrible at drawing, okay. If you see what I'm creating there, I'm creating a right angle triangle. Okay, let's try to draw it out. So with this point here, this is two units going down and three units, sorry, three units going down, two units going across. Okay, three and two. Now because it's a right angle triangle, this is the hypotenuse. So we could use Pythagoras' theorem. And that's what the modulus formula basically is. It's Pythagoras rearranged. Okay, so just to reflect on that, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Now, if I bring the square across, the square roots everything on the far side, and you end up with the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is our formula. So again, it's just Pythagoras. If you want to do it that way and just draw out the triangle, work out the sides, you can totally use Pythagoras directly to find that answer. Now, in this complex number here, we're going to compare this to a general complex number. So a plus bi is often how we do it. And reading off from that, well, the a there is the negative 9, and the b there is the 5. Now, all I'm doing now is substituting into the formula. Okay, So a squared is negative 9 squared. I need to make sure I put that in brackets, because it's negative 9 with the power of 2 in the calculator without brackets will give you an answer of negative 81. Whereas minus 9 in brackets to be squared is the same thing as minus 9 times minus 9, which is plus 81. Uh, the first idea here. Don't really need brackets here because the positive five will never change. But it, it, it's no harm if you're not sure, always substitute a number in brackets. The calculator will be able to handle it then. I just have to pause there just to get the calculator up and running. So if I programmed it in, so that's brackets uh, negative nine, close brackets squared, plus, again, could put in brackets, but I'm just going to leave it as five squared. Um, it's worth noting there that a negative number squared always turns positive. So I get an answer there of the square root of 106. And I don't know if I have to go decimal or not, but let's record that number. So that's equal to, let's see, equal to the square root of 106. I think that's it. I don't need to turn to a decimal. Um, and that's it. So that's my answer. I probably should box it. Obviously, I've been a bit messy here, but when you're problem solving, it's always worth trying to um, maybe start over here to leave space. I was looking on the screen here that I had this extra space, or I would have been trying to struggle um, to get the thing fitted in. And as you can probably note, I'm not the cleanest, tidiest writer in the world, and that count that works against me in situations like this. So let me see if there's a part D. Let me just ask the answer there, and our answer confirms here. And just pointing out there again in the diagram on the, on the answer that the 
distance from the origin is what you're trying to find. And that's a useful thing to remember. Now part D then says, investigate if Z, if Z3 is equal to four minus two I is a solution of the equation Z squared plus two times I times Z take away seven I is equal to zero. Now this is a fairly tricky question, um, or at least it looks like it is. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna write out my equation. If I'm, if I'm trying to problem solve this, this is a good first step. And let's see if I can do it. Minus seven I is equal to zero. And if you recognize here, even though it's using Zs, this is a quadratic, okay? Now they tell me that Z3 or just Z is equal to four minus two I. So how is this helpful? Well, this Z, and this said are the same thing. So once I realize that, and that's often the trick in maths, is to realize that substitute something in and in a sense, see what happens. So if I'm gonna get the first few marks here, once I show that I realize that that's what I have to do, okay, um, I'm just gonna, just gonna do it here. That's my first step and that's the low partial achieved. Okay, so once I do that, well, I have to realize that you're, once I have this, I just have to start removing brackets. We always work left to right, and I see here, uh, I have a statement squared. So four minus two i to be squared means four minus two i multiplied by itself. Now there's different ways to approach this. Um, it's often suggested that the way I suppose I learned it, I write out one of the brackets and I usually go with the second one, write out twice. Now they just happen to be the same in this situation. And then this first term multiplies in here. This second term multiplies here. And no matter how you look at it, you're trying to make sure that the four multiplies by both things in the second bracket. And then the second term here multiplies by both things in the second bracket. So once I've set this up, it's just a matter of going left to right on this mini calculation. Okay, this is my rough work. Four times four is 16 then four times negative two i plus b minus is minus, four times two apples is eight apples. Now keep them going, okay, minus two i times four, so minus by plus is minus, two oranges by four is eight oranges, okay. Keep going, minus by minus is a plus, two by two is four, i by i is i squared. Now if we recall, i squared is the same thing as negative one. We saw that earlier in the video. If I go left right here and try to simplify it, well, 16 minus eight, um, if I owe you eight euro and I borrow eight more off you, I owe you 16 euro. Now here, I can do two things at once. If I squared is equal to minus one, well, why can't I swap them out? And I can. Once I've done that, I end up with a statement, 16 minus 16 I plus four by minus one is minus four. And all I can do now is just add the real, add the, the actual numbers. 16 take away four is 12, take away 16i. So I did all that, okay, for this tiny little statement here. And I've resolved that that's the same thing as 12 minus 16i. Now keep them going left to right. Then I can just remove these brackets. 2i by four is 8i. 2i by negative 2i is negative 4i squared. Now you could always say this plus two X by minus two X, and that might be more obvious. I and X are just effectively two different letters and we can approach them the same way. So now I've resolved as far as here. Okay, so I'm gonna just keep the minus seven I. Don't want to do too much in one go. If I look left to right, well, I can realize, well, that's going to be the same thing as minus one. So I'm gonna be a bit pedantic and write it out and just substitute in the negative one. I squared is negative one. Okay, a bit long-winded to have to do all that. This is going to change sign, but I'm going to just follow it the whole way through. Okay, so minus four by minus one is plus four. And once I'm here, I'm, I'm basically done. Add the real parts, so 12 plus four is 16. The imaginary parts here, minus 16i plus 8i, so I owe you 16 euro. I pay you eight back, so I, I still owe you six, eight euro. Uh, owe you eight euro now borrow seven more off you. I owe you 16, seven is 23 I. Now is the left side equal to the right side? Well, no, they're not. Okay. So Z3, if I can fit it in down here, actually, let me go to the answer. Okay. Z3 um, is 
not a solution. If Z3 was a solution, you would have ended up with zero equals zero. Okay. And that's it. Okay. So um, as always, reach out by email if you want a copy of these set of notes. And if you want to catch me on question two, just please like and subscribe in order to get access to the playlists. Thank you.